and his maidservants, and they bare children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Is that it, brother? That's it. All right. Thank you, brother. Billy, for reading that for me. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of points in there I want to bring out. <clears throat> uh, first, as he was traveling to this land, you know, as before he got there, Brother Rodney has probably a lot of people on his way told him, said, you need to stop and turn around. Don't go any further. Yep. Don't go on. You know, people try to stop you. But he knew he was doing what God said. And he had to keep on going. Come on. And... Somebody probably even said there's a king down there or Pharaoh, whatever, and he, uh, he'll kill you and take your wife. And so, you know, they got down there and the king come and he asked about them and, yeah. and he said, this is my sister. He did tell a lie there as we read on down, Brother Billy read on down further there because she was his half-sister. Yeah. Uh, they had different mamas but the same daddy. But she was a half sister, so it was a half half lie, half truth. Half lie, yeah. Amen. <laughs> so sometimes those will get us get you in trouble. So the king he desired to have her, have Sarah. Yeah. And he wanted to he took her. And you know, he has taken her for himself. But as you see further on down there in the reading, when when he got in trouble, uh, it was us. What have you done to us? Yeah. In my household, right. it wasn't just I. You know, he someone committed the wrong. He's the one uh, with Abraham and Sarah there between the three of them. The, the wrong was happened, but then he said us. And, you know, that's the way a lot of Christians are. You know, they'll do it, then they'll blame it on us, everybody, us. <laughs> and it's, don't you know? Sometimes your whole household will be. Uh, something happened to your whole household because of your own sin. Amen. Just like the story of Achim. Uh, he st stole the things uh, and hid them in his tent. Uh, and the whole camp of Israel uh, was punished because of that. Yeah. So we we got to watch what we do sometimes. Amen. Because your family can be hurt Amen. by that. Amen. Your loved ones around you can be hurt by what your actions have a reaction. Amen. You need to think about what you're doing before you do. Amen. 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 Think about the consequences that happen. One of these days, there's going to be a hell. Yeah. And uh, God's judgment's coming. A lot of times, these kings, they'll have people who can interpret dreams. But this, this here king, he wasn't able to understand his own dream. Yeah. God said God came to him in a dream and told him, said this woman... She's another. She's a man's wife. He didn't say another man's wife. He said a man's wife. Yeah. So brother Billy tells tells him this man. You met him. You know him. Yeah. You know who it was. And he realized it was this man come from the desert. It was Abraham. And he he gave him a choice. He said he said you're you're dead. And yeah. but I give you a choice. You can restore unto Abraham his wife. And the prophet will pray for you and you'll be healed. And so he, he rose up. The Bible says he rose up early the next morning. And he called his servants in and he told them what happened about the dream. You know, he didn't just keep that thing a secret, but he told everybody. He said, this is what happened. And God's vengeance is getting ready to fall. God's getting ready to do something if I don't correct a situation. Don't you know we're in situations sometimes we need to make corrections. Amen. God's coming to you in a dream. God's trying to speak to you in your ear. God's trying to tell you some way, Brother Rodney, that we need to do the right thing. Amen. God's And God told him there, He said, He said, and He first He told God, He said, uh, well, God, uh, he said, this is my sister, and she even said, it's my brother. And, yeah. and he said, in the integrity of my heart, I didn't know me to do wrong. Yeah. And But, you know, there, this was even before the Ten Commandments was given. Yeah. But, but about thou shalt not commit adultery. But in this city, this king maybe made some laws and rules that you couldn't take a man's wife. But he knew how to get around the rules and the laws. And he'd just have the man killed yeah. if he wanted to. Don't you know there's some Christians that know how to get around the laws and the rules? I said, like in our society, to now, if you got a good lawyer, you can get out of things. Yeah. You get around the law. 
Amen. There's some Christians trying to take the Word and trying to get around the will of the Lord. But Amen. it's not going to work. Because there's a God that knows the full situation. There's a God that knows. Yeah. And He's trying to tell you in a dream or trying to tell you some way. But there's some folks not listening. Come on. There's some folks not listening to the voice That's of the true. Lord. Yeah. They're not realizing the dream. And they're not wanting to rise up early and do something about it. They want to just go on and sleep through, Brother Billy. Come on. Go on and sleep on. That's Good what he even tells that church yeah. in Revelations. He tells, says, sleep on, sleep on, church. Because they went to sleep on the Lord. Come on. But... You need to rise up early and do something about the situation. And God said, if you'll restore her, then I'll bless you. And the prophet will pray for you. And he healed him and his wife and his maids there. And man, this guy, he wanted to be sure uh, he wanted to be sure he done the right thing, Brother Bill. He wanted to be sure he gave Abraham a thousand pieces of silver. Yeah. He gave him sheep and lots of things and lands. And he told him, he said, you look on the land and decide what part of my land, the kingdom you want. You can have it. Yeah. Just take it. Just get this thing off of me. He said, I don't want to be. He said, I want to live. He said, I won't be punished by this. Come Just on. take the silver. Take the handmaids. Take the women servant. Come the on. men servants. Take whatever you want. Just get out. Leave me yeah. alone. Yeah. and Let me get right. And well, even this king, he thought he was like a god back then. Them pharaohs and kings, they thought they were gods yeah. uh, here on earth. And they and they thought they were God. But this king here, he met, he heard from the real God. Amen. You know, we're in a society today, there's a lot of people think, well, I'm a god. I'm, uh, well, they say there is no god. I'm a god. That's a, things going on even nowadays, that Christian yeah. science and things like that. It's going on, but... He realized he wasn't God when God spoke to him. Come on, <laughs> Praise God. But he said, I'm going to correct this situation. So God turned the thing around. He blessed him. But he could have went on and kept the wife and God would have uh, destroyed him. Yeah. And out of this, you know, in this situation here, Sister Nancy, that king, he had took the whole nation of Israel by taking this one woman because yeah. all the seed was in that woman there of the nation of Israel. And he could have uh, kept her and tried to destroy her. That's the way you know, Satan is. He wants to destroy us. But God had made a promise with Abraham and Sarah. And they was holding on to the promise. Yeah. When Sarah got took captive, she didn't know. She said she knew that my God made a promise. I don't know about this situation. I don't want to be uh, the prisoner of this king. The king never touched her, the Bible said. Maybe it, and also in that verse there it said Abraham when he came to the place there he said I didn't know if the fear of the Lord was in this place. Yeah. You know we come to some places uh, in our life that the fear of the Lord isn't there. But if we're the man of God or the woman of God we need to be when we come into that place we can bring the fear of God with us. Yeah. We can bring the fear of God oh, and no matter what happens uh, uh, they, can, they can try to th take things from you and take things away from you. But the God we serve they can restore it unto you. He can cause that person to restore it. This is the best, best anti-theft program that goes on, you know. You can get alarms for your houses and cars, but this is the best anti-theft thing you can get here is get a hold of the true Come living on. God because Amen. He'll bring a dream to the, the main man, the king. He brought the dream unto him and said, restore unto the man, his yeah. wife. Amen. Restore it. You know, that's what we have to do sometimes. Restore and repent and restore and make it right. And too many times folks don't want to restore. They want to hold on to that thing. They want to say, God, forgive me, but they then they don't want to restore and get out of the situation. you got to get out of the situation, change your life, and change things. Uh, my pastor I had years ago, he used to tell me the story. He said, now if you was a robber, robber and a burglar, and you was out here robbing and stealing and providing for your family, uh, that's how you provided for your family, and you got saved, you have to change professions, Brother Billy. Yeah. you got to change and get you a different yeah. job. You better find something else to do instead of being the burglar. Maybe come get on. the job of showing people how to make your house anti-burglar proof. Yeah, or something, you know, change the situation. You can't continue in your sin. You can't continue in the way you were going, but you better restore and change. Repent. That's a, uh, a lot of folks, they get saved, but they don't truly repent. They don't truly make it right with God. And, but we, we need to get to the place, like I say, have that walk with God, Brother Rodney, so close with God that wherever we go, whatever the place is, 
that doesn't have the fear of the Lord, that we can bring the true God in through us Amen. and bring the fear of the Lord. We're in the in a country now it's losing that fear of God. Come on, man. We're in a country now that's losing that fear. They want to take the uh, under God we trust and all that off the money and uh, all the pledges of allegiance and the, they already took the prayer out of the schools and all the things are changing. But do you know we're serving a God. He can get a hold. Just as He got a hold of this king in the Old oh. Testament there in Genesis. He can get a hold of the yeah. president. He can get a hold of some senators. He can get a hold of some mayors and leaders oh. and people and even some pastors not preaching oh. some things right. He yeah. can get a hold of them and show them a dream. Oh. And that needs to be our prayer is God show them a dream and show them that they, what they have isn't there. Show them they're leading us in the wrong direction. Show them, Lord. And tell them, give them a choice. Either get right or you're going to be punished. Just as he did with this old king and this Pharaoh there. Yeah. Uh, just because he was a high king, it didn't mean anything to God. God oh, said, I'm right. going to punish you if you don't do the right thing. Amen. And he had to listen to the Lord. He didn't, ignore, he didn't ignore God. He rose up early and went about to do what the Lord did. Amen. That's even in the story of Abraham when he was going to offer Isaac up as a sacrifice. The Bible says in that same verse there, it said, uh, said that Abraham rose up early to go make the sacrifice unto the Lord. He rose up early to be obedient. You know, we better quit sleeping in. We better rise up early and be ready to obey the Lord in the Spirit and in His will and rise up and be ready to go. When the Lord speaks to us and say, Lord, here am I. Send me. I'm ready. I'm willing to go. Uh, he came to that city and he lost his wife and he didn't know what he's going to do. He knew God made the promise. And he, he was about to lose his mind over this. I lost my wife, my, the main love of my life. You know, me and my wife, we had a car stolen from us from a gang in Owensboro there. And uh, the first six months or the, uh, the first year there, we were about went crazy, Brother Billy. We drove all over town looking. As, and when we see uh, Monte Carlo, uh, we think, out, there goes our car maybe. And we follow it and chase it. And look it down. Oh, then it wasn't our car. Yeah. Uh, you know, but every time we see a Monte Carlo, we kind of wonder. And we just looking for it. We lost the love of our car there. Uh, and somebody had taken it from us. But, but, you know, maybe I should have turned to this Scripture in the Word and said, Lord, just restore it. Come to them burglars and them thieves yeah. and bring it on their mind on. that they better restore that or, or consequences are coming Amen. to their them. Something's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. But I didn't think about the Scripture then. And, but, like I said, we about lost our minds. And that's what I can imagine Abraham there as he was thinking about losing his wife. And the king had took her away. He lost his love, but it was restored unto him. And even much more, the thousands of pieces of silver and all the things. And the king said, you can have whatever you want. So, so don't discourage when you lose things. Don't discourage, be discouraged when you lose your job. Don't be discouraged when you lose income. Don't be discouraged when you lose a loved one. Because God can bless in the situation. God can bless you some way through that situation, just as He did with Abraham in this story here. Amen. Praise God. But we need to walk so close to the Lord that we bring, uh, when we preach and witness about the Lord, we bring the fear of the Lord to that person we're witnessing Amen. to. We need to bring them to the very point, the brink of hell, Brother Bill, Amen. and let them feel the flames and let them smell the smoke and let them smell the breath